Okay, you bunch of cartoon characters, we're back. We gotta talk about Iran. They have exceeded the level of enrichment for uranium. And they're gonna keep going. Now, this is what happens when you are a petulant politician like Donald Trump. And you think that your words and some actions on their own are going to be enough to scare a regime that's been around for quite some time. Not going to work. Um, anything short of basically taking them out <clears throat> is not going to work. And obviously I don't want that. No war. No more war. We've had enough war. Holy shit, have we had enough war. But that's the facts. Iran is not backing down from the United States. They're not scared of Donald Trump or Adolf John Bolton or hungry Mike Pompeo or mild or <laughs> mediocre Mike Pence. <laughs> they are not scared of them. And uh, we've talked about this in past videos. One of the reasons why they aren't scared of us is because they possess the great equalizer in warfare, which is missile technology. Whenever a country achieves a certain missile technology level, a level of missile technology, they have achieved a great equalizer. You understand? It's like in a fist fight on the street or something. Like a kid could pull out a gun and fucking handle, handle a, a grown-ass man. Let's keep it real. It's just like that. When you have uh, the level of missile technology they have, our full spectrum dominance that we aim to acquire, aim to achieve in every sense of uh, the, the military theater. So if you don't know what full spectrum dominance is, all that means is we want to have supremacy in every arena of combat. So that's ground combat, that's sea combat, that's air combat, that's cyberspace, that's outer space. Okay. And then you have to break those things up. You understand? So when it comes to to ground combat, that includes missiles. Air combat, that inc includes missiles. Sea combat, that includes missiles. And when you have missile technology that can take out a fucking aircraft carrier, or as the Russians are developing, can take out a fucking submarine at supersonic speeds, you have great equalizers. You don't need nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons, like the ultimate... Um, <laughs> It's like the ultimate security policy in essence. But I digress. The missile technology is the, is the great equalizer. Now, there is a difference in the military between having something called superiority and supremacy. So, for example, air superiority means you have achieved a level of dominance in the sky so as to say your troops can move about mostly in the way that they want. Whereas when it comes to air supremacy, that means you totally dominate the air. That'd be like us against the Taliban. There's nothing, they have no, they have no way to resist. Okay. Us against a lot of the countries, you'll notice we always have air supremacy. We always have sea supremacy. Now, ground supremacy manifests itself in different ways in an open battlefield. Yeah, we have that. In an urban combat zone, no, we don't have that, okay? Because when it comes to urban combat, just like the kid out in the fucking street, an AK-47 is a great equalizer. An IED is a great equalizer, okay? And it can overcome pretty much any armor that you got. So, and humans can only take such a blast anyways. It doesn't matter how strong the armor is. You're fucking, you can only take such a blast before you have fucking traumatic brain injury, as they call it. TBI, I know some people who served in the Marines with TBI. For, by, they were hit with IEDs. Their vehicles were hit with IEDs. It's a fucking terrible thing. Now, when it comes to Iran, everyone, you guys probably know they shot down one of our drones recently. That's not actually as rare as you might think. If you go look back at um, recent history, you don't, even have to, you don't even have to go back decades, really. Too many, you know, too far to see that Anytime we encroach too much on their territory, they don't give an inch. They don't give an inch. So they shot down an F-117 before. They've shot down helicopters. They've shot down other drones. They try to hack our drones. 
Other countries as well are, are, are somewhat similar, like Russia and China. They'll snatch up uh, submersible drones. Yes, we have those. We have drones that go underwater. I mean, ob it should be obvious. A lot of people are like, what, really? No, we, we got that shit. And, and we use them. It's mostly for surveillance, but we use it. We also use animals, by the way. You might not know that. We also have used animals. <coughs> now, I am anxious to see what happens by the end of the week. Donald Trump is very good at controlling the news cycle. Or, <sighs> controlling a part of the news cycle. He is good at moving the news cycle along because it goes from one scandal to the next with him or one blunder to the next with him. You get what I'm saying? So he's very good at just moving along. You don't have time to dwell on that. And, and a lot of people are just like, ah, what the fuck? You know, it's, it's a wash. But on stuff like this, he ha it has to constantly be addressed because he's surrounded by neocons. That's his own fault. He appointed Gina Haspel. He appointed Mike Pompeo. He appointed Adolph John Bolton. He chose maniac Mike Pence. All these lunatics, these simple-minded pricks that have no business being anywhere near the halls of power. He picked them. That's why I call him Deep State Donald. Okay? He picked them. That's his mistake. Now I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. Listen, we've boosted troops in, in the region since he got there. We've uh, increased drone strikes by 400%. Maybe that's why they shot that drone down. <laughs> so you know they're not going to give an inch. And you know that Donald Trump, his high approval rating just came out last week. It was 44%. That's his high approval rating. He's in deep trouble. At He's in deep trouble. He's at risk of being dominated in 2020. Okay? And don't forget, he has special elections this year, which he's probably going to get trounced in in November. So it's not looking good. He knows. He can see the writing on the wall. When you're polling, when your highest, the highest poll that you've had is 44%, when, it, when you put them all together, that's not good. The lowest, the lowest percentage to ever get reelected was like 48%. And that was uh, George W. Bush. Democrats fucking handed him that one. Although some people say there was like a lot of malfeasance in Ohio. No, not some people say. There was a lot of malfeasance in Ohio. Vote, vote shifting, vote stealing, vote purging. That's how Republicans get down, though. Shouldn't be surprised after what they did in Florida. Shouldn't be surprised after what they do in North Carolina, Wisconsin, and everywhere else. What they did in Pennsylvania for years until we got the wolf pack, baby. Fuck, take care of that shit. Now, hopefully this doesn't escalate too much. You know, like I said, he's surrounded with these people. But it's his own fault, man. It's his own fault. His base doesn't... A lot of his base does not want war. And of course, the left does not want war. Okay. He had his little photo op with Kim Jong-un. He backed down on his, on his trade war with China. He's pissing off the neocons in his administration with that sort of shit. And you know that's right. And I'm going to leave it at that. And hopefully, we have some peace. Hopefully, he re-enters the Iran deal that he broke. And then we can get back to working towards a more prosperous future for all. Take it easy, folks. I'll be back with some more.